Hello guys, welcome back. So let's do a new topic, arterial supply of the abdomen. Regarding abdomen, we have done a lot in the previous videos, the layers of the abdomen, the muscles of the abdomen. So now let's do the arterial supply. For arterial supply, we should first know about the aorta. As in the previous videos, when we were doing arterial supply for upper limb, lower limb, at that time, many a times I've explained you this aorta. I'm giving you a quick revision once again. So you have an aorta, which is divided into three parts, right? So aorta originates from the left ventricle and it becomes the ascending aorta. Then comes the arc of aorta and then comes the descending aorta. The arc of aorta is where the three branches will be coming off and going towards your face and the head part, right? This descending aorta, it when reaches the abdomen, we call it as abdominal aorta. Now this abdominal aorta is going to give branches. So the second most important branch which it gives is the celiac trunk. And the celiac trunk gives off major branches which are going to supply the abdomen, which are going to provide the arterial supply to the abdomen. So let's know the branches of the celiac trunk, but before that you should know where it is present. So write down it's present at T12 level and the branches which it gives, they are going to be present ventrally. That means they will be present on the interior side and they are going to be unpaired. Unpaired means they won't be having a companion together. Like if I say there's one left gastric artery, so there is going to be one left gastric artery. There won't be another left gastric artery. If I say short gastric artery, so short gastric arteries are only one artery. There cannot be any other short gastric artery. So they are unpaired. Okay. The celiac trunk, it has the major branches. So let's know that. The major branches are three in number actually. So the first branch that you should know is the left gastric artery okay the second branch the second main branch of the celiac trunk is common hepatic artery the third branch is splenic artery so let's know about these branches in detail okay this left gastric artery it is going at the small curvature of the stomach. We'll be doing this in detail in a few minutes. First, let's do the common hepatic artery. So common hepatic artery, it gives off two major branches. So write them down. The first is proper hepatic artery and a gastroduodenal artery. From the name itself, if you split the names, then you will understand the location where it is going to supply. So proper hepatic artery is related to the liver. Hepat is liver, right? So it's going to be supplied to level but it is giving off two branches this proper hepatic artery is giving two branches one is right gastric artery so this is going for the stomach gastric is related to the stomach okay so it is giving right gastric artery remember that the left gastric artery it was directly originating from the celiac trunk whereas right gastric artery it's a branch of proper hepatic artery okay the next thing which you have to know is the second branch of the proper hepatic artery which is very important because as the word suggests hepatic proper hepatic it will be solely going to the liver so there should be some branch, particular branch for the liver itself, right? So this is the branch which I'm talking about, that is right and left hepatic artery. When we were doing the liver, at the time I told you that this liver is divided into two main lobes, the right lobe, the left lobe. So right lobe is going to be supplied by the right hepatic artery. The left lobe is going to be supplied by the left hepatic artery. Now, from this hepatic artery, you should know this right hepatic artery. It is going to give one branch, a very important branch. So right down, it gives a branch. And the branch name is cystic artery. Branch name is cystic artery. Now cystic artery as the name tells, it is going to supply the cystic duct. It supply the cystic duct. And the cystic duct is the duct of the gallbladder. Okay, so then right, it supplies the cystic duct of gallbladder. I hope this is clear. Just remember that the right hepatic artery is going to give the branch. Okay, and this right hepatic artery, it also supplies the right lobe of the liver. Now this gastro duodenal artery, you should know, it is also giving off two main branches. The first branch that you should know is the superior pancreato duodenal artery. See, by the name, you can understand the location. Superior pancreato means superiorly towards the pancreas and the duodenum part, okay? Superior pancreato duodenal artery, and there's one more branch coming from the gastro duodenal, that is right, gastro epiploic artery. Okay, the next is your splenic artery, that is your direct branch coming off, the important direct branch coming off from the celiac trunk. So let's know about the branches of the splenic artery. Now splenic artery as the name tells, it is going to directly supply the spleen, right? 
one thing that you should know regarding the splenic artery is it runs in spleno renal ligament now spleno renal ligament is a ligament connecting the spleen and the renal renal is kidney okay the spleen and the kidney so there's a ligament in between them and in that ligament the splenic artery is going to run okay now the branches of this splenic artery you should know the first branches let's make columns for this also the first branch is left gastro epiploic artery the second branch is short gastric artery now this is a question for croc this short gastric artery they ask that where does the short gastric artery comes from or who is the branch of the short gastric artery then your answer should be splenic artery okay the next is the pancreatic branch sometimes they ask this question that who supplies the pancreas the arterial supply for the pancreas is then you have to answer then the answer is splenic artery okay so it gives off branches to the stomach and gives off branches to itself that is spleen and it gives off branches to the pan pancreas and there's one more branch that is left gastro epiploic artery that's all you have to remember regarding the splenic artery okay now there's one thing that you should know regarding this proper hepatic artery so make down write down it as a note it's important that this proper hepatic artery as i said this proper hepatic artery the branch of the common hepatic artery this runs in the hepato duodenal ligament it is a crock question so please remember this the proper hepatic artery and there's one more thing that is portal vein okay these two structures they run into hepato duodenal ligament sometimes they give this in the question and they ask the name of the ligament or sometimes they do it vice versa that they'll give the ligament in the question and i will ask you what and all structures passes through this ligament so you should know that proper hepatic artery and portal vein runs through hepato duodenal ligament Now, as the name tells, hepato duodenal ligament means a ligament which is going to connect the hepat, which is liver, duodenal, which is duodenum. So the ligament which connects the liver and the duodenum. Okay. There's one more branch in the splenic artery. I told you orally, but I didn't write it. The branch name is splenic proper. That is proper splenic artery which will be going and supplying to the spleen in particular. Okay. So splenic proper, or sometimes they mention it as lienalis artery. Now lienalis, this is another term for spleen. Okay. So lienalis. artery there are some anastomoses present now anastomoses means what that the arteries are going to meet with each other what happens is that if there is anastomoses present there's a very great importance of this anastomoses if there's some blockage or damage in this artery then this artery is still intact so the blood flow is not disturbed to a particular organ okay so this is the very much importance of the anastomoses and during surgery you should know this anastomoses because if you clamp one part of the artery suppose these were the two arteries which were anastomosing with each other anastomosing is basically connecting with each other okay so these two arteries were going to connect to each other and they are actually connected okay you can erase this part and they are actually connected there are two different arteries the darker artery there's one darker i'm drawing so that you understand okay and there's one lighter shade so this darker artery and this lighter one is meeting you can see if i clamp only this artery to stop the blood flow and i don't know about this artery then what will happen if i cut if i cut here in between this artery wasn't clamped so if this artery wasn't clamped the blood will burst out right so you have to clamp both the arteries right so this is of great importance during surgery that you should know that anastomoses are important to to not to maintain the blood flow during any damage to the artery and it is also important during surgery to avoid any medical accidents okay so let's know about these anastomoses what are all anastomoses is present in the stomach first is between the left gastric artery and the right gastric artery so these two arteries meet at the small curvature of the stomach so the anastomosing point is the small curvature of stomach okay the next anastomosis is present between the right gastroepiploic artery and left gastroepiploic artery this they anastomose at greater curvature of stomach now what is this greater and smaller curvature of stomach let's see so as you can see in this picture there is this great small curvature of the stomach and there is this greater curvature of the stomach so you can see on the small curvature of the stomach left gastric artery is meeting with the right gastric artery okay and then greater curvature of the stomach you can see the left gastroepiploic artery is meeting with the right gastroepiploic artery and there is one more question which comes from this part so make down a note for it another note we'll write down the anastomosis okay so this is a note related to anastomosis so you can give this a title as anastomosis note first of all let's write down the anastomosis left gastric artery with right gastric artery you should remember where and all this artery came from the left gastric artery directly came from the celiac trunk this right gastric artery it came from the proper hepatic artery and you should know where this is present this is present at small curvature of stomach 
there's one more question coming from this anastomos this left gastric artery and the right gastric artery that this left gastric artery is present towards the cardiac part of the stomach later on we'll be doing the parts of the stomach in detail we'll be doing stomach as an organ in detail that time i'll tell you about the parts of the stomach so now you can know that this left gastric artery is present at the cardiac part of the stomach whereas this right gastric artery that is present at the pyloric part of the stomach that is very important because it has come in the crop questions many a time okay the next anastomose which we studied was between the left gastroepiploic artery you should remember their branches where they came from and anastomoses with the right gastroepiploic artery the location where it is present that is also very important so please remember that the location is they are present at the greater curvature of the stomach this is asked in the question that's why i am repeating it and trying to focus on it more okay so please remember this part that is all you have to remember regarding the arterial supply of the abdomen now you have seen that we have learned about pancreas we've learned about duodenum we've learned about stomach spleen but what about the intestines we haven't done anything related to that right so there are some arteries which are especially for the intestines so let's know about them in detail they are directly originating from the abdominal aorta so we'll give them the main heading that is mesenteric arteries and this mesenteric arteries there are two actually one is superior mesenteric artery which will also directly originate from the abdominal aorta and inferior mesenteric artery and that is also going to originate from the abdominal aorta so you have superior mesenteric artery the second is inferior mesenteric artery now the branches of them is very important so do pay attention to it they are solely going to supply to your intestines okay so the first artery is your right colic artery now what does this mean by colic let's first know that okay so separately you can make this diagram if you want of intestines so you have this ascending colon right you have this ascending colon you have transverse colon in the middle then you have descending colon right and you have this s shaped colon that is your sigmoid colon right so let's know the other names for this colon in one of the previous videos also i've told you about this anyways let's revise this this ascending colon that is present on the right hand side right so it is also called as right colic now in large intestine we call it as colon right so it is a large intestine part of large intestine so it is called as right colic or we call it as right colon right down as right colon it has two names right colon ascending colon or ascending part of the large intestine the transverse is present in the middle that's why it is having the term as middle colon the descending is present on your left hand side so it is having another name as left colon okay and the sigmoid it is sigmoid colon that's all you have to remember regarding sigmoid and this s shaped colon so this was about the colon i hope now you know what is right colic what is left colon what is sigmoid colon and transverse colon so this right colic which i'm talking about it is basically then going to supply home that is going to supply the ascending colon this right is the another name for the ascending right so right colic the transverse colic or you can call this as middle colic these are arteries right colic artery middle colic artery the next is inferior pancreato duodenal it is very important branch why we'll be knowing that in a few minutes so inferior pancreas to duodenal artery please remember it make a star on it the next is jejunal branch the next is iliac branch and the last is iliocolic branch the last is iliocolic branch okay this iliocolic branch it is related to the appendix so whenever the question comes regarding appendix you should always think about two arteries one is this iliocolic artery the next is the appendicular artery in case of appendectomy we have to ligate the appendicular artery at the time iliocolic branch is also there okay so iliocolic branch you have to remember it that it is related to the appendix or you can say it is related to the appendicular artery okay the arteries of the inferior the branches of the inferior mesenteric artery let's do that so the first branch is your left colic artery that is for the descending colon as we have already completed your ascending colon we have completed the transverse colon now came the descending colon the last colon remaining is your sigmoid colon so the artery name is sigmoid artery i hope this makes sense and is easy right the next comes is superior rectal artery now it is important so please remember 
these branches okay remember these are peri mesenteric arteries so remember the inferior mesenteric arteries now why i said you to remember this inferior pancreatic duodenal artery is because we have something called a superior pancreatic duodenal artery and we did it in this previous slide right it is a branch of gastro duodenal artery which is further a branch of common hepatic artery and this common hepatic artery is the major branch of celiac trunk which is coming from the abdominal aorta right so remember the superior pancreatic duodenal artery where it comes from and you should remember that inferior pancreatic duodenal artery it comes from the superior mesenteric artery basically they both are going to anastomose that also you should know okay so you can write down it as a note that superior pancreatic duodenal artery which is branch of gastro duodenal artery you should remember the branch it is very very important okay it anastomoses with inferior pancreatic duodenal artery in this inferior pancreatic duodenal artery it is a branch of superior mesenteric artery very very important point so please remember this okay so, so till now we have done three anastomoses okay so please remember all these three anastomoses two we have done in the previous slide and one we had doing we did it right now so left gastric artery with right gastric artery left gastric epiploic with right gastric epiploic then we did the superior pancreatic duodenal artery with the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery i hope this is clear there's something called as arc of riolan it is very important so write down arc of riolan now what is this it is an anastomose it is an anastomose so this is the fourth anastomose that we are studying and it is an anastomose between bw is between the middle colic branch that is the artery which supplies the transverse colon and left colic branch that is the artery which supplies the descending colon okay you should remember this anastomose as well that it is known as arc of riolan it is an anastomose between the middle colic artery and the left colic artery they both anastomose with each other okay so remember these these were the arterial supply for the abdomen complete arterial supply so please remember this part and that's it for this video thank you